It's about to go down with Mark and Kathy, a live coaching show about dropping ideas. Mark and Kathy coach and have conversations with brilliant idea creators who are reimagining the world through the expression of their words, thoughts, and action. Hey, everybody, I'm Kathy Armias. And I am Mark Williams. And I got to tell you, I am so super hyped to have today's idea conversation. Oh, man, I was dancing on the stage. She was dancing on the stage. She was doing all the moves and I was just following the lead. And many years later, one of my most favorite students in the world, and this is not the first time we've had one of my former students, shout out to Bo. But this, this is a special conversation right now with the one, the only, Kai Martinez, Kaidi Martinez. I used to call her Katie, but now she's dancing across stages. She's choreographing dances. She is an animation consultant. She is Kai Martinez and she's joining us on It's About to Go Down. Kai, it's so wonderful to see you. It's so great to talk to you. And, and, and right off the bat, we have to hear you tell us about this idea today, all about seeking out who you are and finding what you were meant to do and seeing if you're brave enough to follow it. So I've gushed, I've gushed, I've gushed. Tell us about your idea. I'm receiving, I'm receiving, I'm receiving all of the energy. Woo! Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. I am honored to be here. What a full circle moment for me this is right now. I'm gonna be a little selfish, it's my moment. <laughs> no, um, this is so uh, incredibly uh, dope and amazing um, because going with the idea, you know, in the full circle moment, you know, I, to be sitting here across virtually from you, Mr. Mark Williams, <laughs> this is my balance. She so said it, she Mr. said Williams. it. <laughs> he used to call you Mr. Williams and it's a hard habit to break. Um, but, and in, in, in again, also sitting here with you, Kathy, and just to be sitting almost across from you when, uh, Mr. Williams, you were someone that I looked up to for so long, uh, and you were you had such an impact on my life as a as a teenager in high school at Brooklyn Tech, and uh, now to be sitting almost across from you, it's it's very like my mind is blown. So I'm I'm extremely honored and excited to be here, and it's also a testament to um, going after and finding yourself and going after something, even though you know, maybe the, the odds are against you or you're not, you're not necessarily think you're meant for something like that. Um, you know, my career in dance is not one that was like, I didn't grow up in a dance studio. I didn't grow up um, being given those opportunities in dance. I grew up loving it. I have, you know, I'm, I'm a first generation born Colombian American Latina from Jackson Heights, Queens. And, you know, my family, we grew up dancing, we grew up uh, having parties, and um, I, that's, that was my first, like, exposure to dance, and, and I just loved it. And, you know, and if you watch children, you can kind of what they gravitate to, and it wasn't anything that anyone pushed upon me, it was just something that I just liked. And as I got older, you know, during the MTV music video years, and watching Michael Jackson, and Missy Elliott, and Janet, Again, I started to kind of also be inspired. And in school, I gravitated towards after school programming of uh, the arts, whether it was in a choir or I was in band at, in my in middle school. And then I started dancing. So when I went over to tech, you know, I had this also this, this like desire to be a part of the arts as well. And if it wasn't for someone like you, Mr. Williams, well, not someone for you, <laughs> literally, if it wasn't for like, for you. Specifically um, you. <laughs> specifically you, right? And not someone like you, it's specifically you, uh, you know, someone that fostered that and, uh, and gave me permission to love and, and go towards what I love to do. Um, I would not have had the courage to step forward into it. So a big part of it was 
my natural desire to want something and, 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 and then seeking that out and not being afraid to seek it out, even though I wasn't necessarily given all the tools to understand what it was. And then as I moved on that path, I started meeting people on my journey that gave me the like the little like a little hand, like, hey, a little push, a little encouragement keep pushing, keep going. And if it wasn't for that, as I went on to college and then went on to, to start my dance professional career, you know, I wouldn't have had that courage to continue pushing along. Cause I, there were times when it, when it has gotten difficult and I think back on like my time in high school and I think back on remembering having the idea for a hip hop dance team at tech. And then I just kind of brought it to you. And I just had this idea and even feeling safe enough to share that very vulnerable idea with someone. Mm -hmm. And then you being just encouraging and being like, yeah, we'll do it. Well, this is how you do it. You just have to fill out this paperwork and this is what you do. <laughs> and I was like, wow, really? Is that easy? And, <laughs> and that was it, you know, and, and, and we did it. And, and again, if it wasn't for that, you know, in those in those young years, in those formative years, as an adult, when I when I've had moments of insecurity, it, those are, those are the moments that you look back on. Those are the moments that I've looked back on, and been like, you know what, I can do that because now as an adult, I can hold myself up and be like, okay, I not only can hold myself up, but I can share that um, permission with a younger generation. You know, so. Um, yeah, so that, that's kind of what I think off top when, when we think about this idea of finding yourself and, and, and having the courage to move towards something and having that, that conversation of the idea with you guys, um, and specifically you, Mr. Williams, it's like, it's such a, there's such a, a connection there because if not for people like you that help and that encourage. And I'm sure Kathy, you're the same way because, you know, energy attracts energy. So I can, I know I speak for, for, for both of you and, and the impact that you've had on other people's lives. Um, and I'm a testament to the impact that being able to give someone permission to go for their dreams, uh, the impact that it has, you know what I mean? Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. I, I, you, are, you, are you guys going to try to make me cry? I put mascara on today. Like, I'm not trying to cry today, so don't make me. Don't do that. Um, I just want to clear something up for the audience really quick, because you two are so, it's adorable to see you two talk. I just could sit back here and listen to you two talk about tech. When we talk about tech, we're talking about Brooklyn Tech, which is where these two Sorry. met. Uh, Mark, you were a teacher back then, or were you principal yes. already? A teacher. A teacher. Okay. <laughs> Teaching at that time. And then Kai, you were a student at Brooklyn Tech and, yes. and, you know, just even be going to Brooklyn Tech, one of the best, I'm just going to put a shout out to Brooklyn Tech right now, right? One <laughs> yes. of the best high schools in the country. So yeah. shout out to both of you, Mark, for being, you know, teacher administrator there and Kai for being at Tech. Um, and I want to clear up one more thing because, uh, you know, the story, I think I know the background of the story, but the story is that you you wanted to start, I mean, you alluded to a little bit, you wanted to start this hip hop dance competition, right? And, and then, you know, you, you got it to happen. And then didn't, didn't you do it for a couple of years? Like, to, give me a, give us a little bit more backstory on that. Okay, sure. Well, it was two things. Number one, there's a competition that was called Sing. So it was a competition amongst the different grades. And uh, I was with, and each grade had an administrator that was like the mentor that overlooked the grades uh, performance. And I'm sure Mr. Williams, you could go into that probably deeper than I can, but just, you know, we had to do everything ourselves. They gave us the theme and we had to do the script. We had to do the choreography, the music, the dancing, the singing, all of the things. Um, mm. And Mr. Williams was our, was our mentor for the years yes. that I was at Tech. So, you know, I, I, and so for me, I was like, I don't even, I'll be honest. I don't even remember how, I got into being a part of the dance, dance, like the choreography of it. I, I, I don't remember. I know, I think maybe my sophomore year, I helped with the script, maybe I, I was in it. I just remember being just a part of it. And I'll never forget, I wanted to add some salsa in there. 
And then I wanted to add some like Latin. I wanted to add some, but also I wanted to add some Michael Jackson and Belle Biv DeVoe. And, there, and I just, Mr. Williams was such a big part of that. Like he even came on stage and danced. He was my dance partner um, for the Latin number. <laughs> and one of, the, and one of the first years of the show. And, you know, again, just being very encouraging and also also guiding us in, in the right direction. And we won. I believe we won a couple of those years, right? The three, so. yeah. Mark's like, I'm not trying to be shy here. It's, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then the old. other, the other, the other instance was, I think, I believe that was my senior year that I had, you know, I guess I was, I was definitely excited about, I was also a part of the salsa club and uh, I wanted to start like a, a hip hop club because there was a step team, there was a cheering the cheerleaders, there was a salsa club, but there wasn't something uh, more like hip hop, a little more urban, a little just more of a mix of what we were doing at that time. So again, I went to, I think Mr. Williams, you might've been a Dean that year, I think. I was a, no, I was a coordinator of student activities. There we go, there we go. <laughs> yeah, the Costa. Are you, was that his call? Oh, wow. Yeah. Costa, ooh, she remembers. She's like, hey, uh, that. Yeah, I remember you were like, in an office, you had an office on the first floor. Yeah. It was a thing. Yeah. And, uh, and then yeah, and then you you, just, you helped you helped uh, us organize that. And then by the end of the year, we were able to perform and we put together our own show, and it was a whole thing. So um, yeah, again, that that those years are so important because that's what when I went off to college when I went, I went to St. John's University and. Uh, you know, what the first thing I asked was, where's the dance team? I have to be a part of it. I'm just coming out of high school. I needed to continue dancing. And then I found a dance team at St. John's and which was the Caribbean Student Association. My sophomore year, um, I was the uh, I became the chore one of the head choreographers of the team up until my my senior year until I graduated. But even that also the work ethic that I learned you know, being at tech and being just having to go to rehearsals, having to put shows together, having to put, um, yeah, all these performances and stuff. When I went to St. John's, a big reason why I was able to go from my freshman year to my sophomore year and become the head choreographer was because of my work ethic. I was there. I was always on time. I was always at rehearsal. Reg my grades were always, you know, I graduated cum laude uh, from St. John's. Yeah. <laughs> So my grades are always good. And, you know, I just always had, but I always wanted to also do dance. I always wanted to have that same, the same um, passion that I had for school and, and all that. I had it for dance. So, um, yeah. Okay. I love this. I love this y'all because um, we don't usually go into this much background, but it's so cool every once in a while to like go, this is the, and you know, because Mark, you're specifically part of Ty's journey, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, those beginning moments where she was like taking her love for dance at home and then, mm -hmm. then bringing it into like a really vulnerable place. Right. Kai, I don't know. I mean, I'm just envisioning, I, tell me if I'm wrong, but it's pretty vulnerable to be doing that. That competition sounds awesome, but intense at the same time, like having to do all the stuff you know, the costumes, the choreography, the singing, the dancing, everything. So, um, but Kai, tell us like, so now that we've heard the backstory, tell us really quick before we get to the idea, like what you're doing now, you, you've done something really cool lately. So tell us about it. Yes. Um, yes. Well, you know, I've been a professional dancer and choreographer now for over 15 years. And um, the past year or so I've worked on uh, Disney's Encanto, which was is an animated film. It's up for an Oscar now. We let them know that. It's so good. <laughs> I was thinking about you. I watched it the other night and I couldn't help but thinking about you. Oh, amazing. Yeah, it's that's the biggest thing. It, it, that's the biggest thing that's happened that has been so impactful for me uh, is seeing how the world is just moved by the film, by the dancing, by the music. Um, there was so much love that went into making this film from everyone who was a part of it, from the directors to all of us in the dancing uh, department to the animators. Everyone just wanted to get it right. And it was such a dream come true to be a part of it. A, because I'm also Colombian. 
Uh, and so I was able to bring my background, my heritage and culture, also uh, combine that with my dance career, my dance experience. And so I came on as an assistant choreographer and a dancer. And after we worked on the first number, which was uh, We Don't Talk About Bruno, which is doing very well on the charts, <laughs> doing super well. Um, after we worked on that number, they asked me to come on and be a consultant. So I was able to work with the animators and the directors and make sure all of the, the all of the dancing sequences were done correctly and they were accurate. And that was a whole new experience for me. I've never, uh, you know, I've never worked with animators or animation or, you yeah. know, so treating them as dancers was very interesting. But also I've, I've also been a dance teacher for many years. So it was almost like teaching people had to dance again, you know, it was, it was very, I had to be very specific and very accurate on, on what the shoulder is doing and the rotation and the hips are moving this way. And I feel like the work that we put in was seen and it's been felt. Mm -hmm. And the biggest compliments that I've gotten have been from Latin, from Latinos and Latinas that are like, Hey, I see myself like we see it looks so real like I can see the hip movement and the hips and the shoulders and and so for me that was like okay I, I feel like I did I did my job you know I did my job <laughs> and uh yeah oh okay so here's where here's where I, th it starts for us Kai oh my gosh so you took all that background and you saw this idea come to life. I'm so now let's start talking about like, let's start talking about like how you would give this idea as a gift for somebody else. Right. Yeah. So you've went through this thing. You are living your best life. You saw this idea come to fruition in your life of like, you described it before as finding your creative voice, being brave enough to go mm -hmm. after it. And like, I don't know, there's a couple of things I'm thinking, pick whatever one you want to go with, but I'm thinking like, why should people do that? Are people that are maybe already settled into like careers, should they still look for like, like I'm thinking of all these things, like it seems like an easy path when you're young and you're, you know, you go, like, it seemed like your path took you right there, but like, how would, how is this idea for everybody? I guess is what I'm saying. Right. Good question. That is a very good question. You know, I, as, as, as amazing as this path has been for me as this journey, it has been very difficult as well. There mm -hmm. are times where I have sat in my house and I'm like, man, I wish that I wish that I was inspired to work in an office and have a, a nine to five and a 401k. And, 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 you know, I wish, and, 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 <laughs> and, and, and it's the stability. It's the stability. Not, not to of, anybody that's doing that, but yeah. I've done it. And like, <laughs> right. You know, and I, it's the stability of of the work, you know what I mean? The stability mm -hmm. of the lifestyle. There's that's the opposite of what I'm doing. What, what you yeah. know, th this path that I'm on. It there have been you know I've had knee surgery. I've had to. I've, there's many times where I had um, struggled financially because you're just you're, you're going from gig to gig, especially early on. You're, mm -hmm. you're trying to find the next gig and it may not come for a month or two. Whereas, you know, some people have that steady paycheck every two weeks or every week. So it, it comes with its challenges. And however, there's a, there's a fulfillment that I feel there's a, there's a, there's a peace, the inner peace that I feel um, as I'm doing what I, what I'm doing, right. As I'm, and it, it has changed when I was younger, it was, I wanted to be a performer and I wanted to uh, get, it was about me. I wanted to dance. I wanted to get that instant gratification of being in front of a crowd and, and, and feeling that, right? And as I've gotten older, it's evolved, which I didn't think it would be evolved. I thought I would always just be about dance. It was always going to be this. And it's evolved into now I enjoy being part of a creative process or being part of something where I'm not necessarily the dancer. I'm not necessarily the one in front of the camera or the one in front. And even that has evolved and grown. So I think mm -hmm. as we get older, what my advice would be to anyone is to look around and, and think about what it is that, what it is 
that you would lose sleep over? Mm. What you would wake up because I asked myself this question when I was 21 or 22 after college, I had a I had an internship that was becoming a job at Sony Music and I had graduated with media communications a degree and I was going to go into marketing and kind of go that route. And, and I and I could not get up every morning for the life of me. I had to be there. It was nine to five. And every morning it was a struggle to get out of bed. Every day it was a struggle to like go and lunch. And I, after lunch, I'm going to go get coffee. And after coffee, I'm going to go. It just felt like I was in this cycle. When I would dance though, I would leave, I would leave work. I would go take like three dance classes, get home super tired and wake up and do it again. And the dance motivated me in school. Dance motivated me in high school. Dance always motivated me. I got good grades because I was like, if I don't get good grades, I'm not going to be able to dance. And so when I sat back, because I, I, it came to a point where I felt like I was lazy. I was like, am I a lazy like person? Like, <laughs> I don't like to work. Is that, is that what I just don't like to do? And I had to sit myself back and say, I would lose sleep over dance and I'm not getting paid for it. Mm. Like, I do it because I love it. It's something that moves me to wake up in the morning. I will wake up at four in the morning. I still do it. I did it last week. I will wake up at four in the morning to be on time somewhere and for 12 hours, you know? And that's when I knew that this is, for me, is where I need to be. So that would be my advice to anyone else, you know? If there's something that you're doing that you would you would lose sleep over, you would sacrifice whatever you needed you would and you would do it for free mm. that's it that's it yeah i would go for that no matter Tom, what. what if i would do it for free but i wouldn't wake up at four where did where does it fall <laughs> <laughs> right I, I got a question first of all i gotta tell you i'm so mesmerized i'm just i feel like i'm just sitting back and just listening because i'm so mesmerized i i have to ask you this guy I think there are people who have dreams and visions of things they want to do. Mm. And I don't even want to say they get stuck in their nine to five. Whatever the case may be, they are working in this nine to five. And they haven't found the courage. Mm to chase that dream. And when Kathy asked you about, you know, what's the audience and, 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 and how do you see you putting, your, putting this idea out here? I'm wondering for all of the people out there in the world who would have the opportunity to see you stand in the middle of a red circle and give a TED talk or, you know, go on a, or go on a dance floor and deliver a talk from a dance floor. <laughs> um, how do how do we find the courage mm. to do what we were meant to do? Man, for me, it's funny because you, you ask a question and it takes me back. It takes me back to that time where I was transitioning from a nine to five into dance full time. Mm. And I remember I I was in this nine to five. Again, I was I was unhappy. And I knew it was like, it just felt such a, as a far off dream. It felt like so far. And there was something that I read somewhere or heard that it was like, you know, you, there is, your plan B is to work your plan A, right? Your plan A, what is your wow. plan A? What is your plan A? And if you move, you know, there was this also after, after, college, there was this idea of, well, you go get, have, you'll have something to fall back on. That was, that was the, 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 the point of my degree was you'll have something to fall back on. And I was like, I don't know that this doesn't sit well with me. Cause if I feel like I have something to fall back on, am I ever really going to jump? Yeah. I'm always going to yeah. stay. I'm always going to have one foot back here. Cause I can, I can rest. I can literally just, but if I have nothing to fall back on, and I just, then I can jump. And so I, even though I had a college degree, I decided to pursue fully what dance was. So I made a plan for myself. 
And for, for myself, I decided at first I would keep my nine to five because I had to keep a certain level of uh, income coming in. And I started training. I started taking dance classes after I would get off at, of, of, um, of work. So I would get off at work at five and go take classes at night. And I, I did that for some time. And then, you know, it was like a step by step. I knew it wasn't going to be overnight, but I just knew it was going to happen. It was just, I just knew whatever it was, was going to happen. And I don't know if I was crazy, <laughs> but I just had this feeling. And, and every step of the way, I, got, I just gained a little more confidence. You know, they say when you, when you achieve things, when you accomplish things, even doing your bed in the morning, those little tiny little achievements start building your confidence. Mm-hmm. and start giving your like you start feeling like yeah I can I can do this I can do that and I can do that you know so I started taking classes started getting better started training then I applied to uh, teach at an after school program so then in my nine to five I cut my hours so I can be part-time so I would work part-time and it was no longer a full-time I was part-time and then afternoon I would work in this uh, after school program So now I was still making the same amount of money, but now I'm like, I'm doing more dance stuff, Mm -hmm. doing more dance stuff. I'm still, I'm I'm plugged in, I'm getting more experience. So then I kept doing it. And then I still kept taking dance classes in the evenings. So after that, I then found a dance studio that, you know, I was like, okay, I'll teach children. I feel like if I can teach kids, it'll help me be a better dancer. So I started doing that. And I started teaching a couple times a week. And I got to the point, then I started teaching at another dance studio. It got to the point where my dance life started taking over my job life. So it got to a point one day I didn't need that job anymore because I was teaching classes. I was teaching after school programs. I was doing work study at the dance studio. Like I was fully immersed in my in this dance world and it wasn't because I was a professional dancer yet it was because I just wanted to learn so going back to what my advice would be is seek to learn what it is that you like right if you have this passion for something learn more about it get involved be around it put yourself in it And don't give yourself the pressure of, oh, I have to be this professional. I have to dance for Beyonce tomorrow. No, it's I'm going to learn as much as I can and be around it as much as I can and uh, and allow it to fall into place, allow things to fall into place. Mm -hmm. Having a strategy for myself, making a plan for myself financially gave me the, the, the leeway to kind of pursue it and just and also Pursue it without the stress of the pressure of having to be a certain thing at a certain time, you know? And so when I, when I was training, I was strategic about that. I was strategic about learning from people that were in life where I wanted to be, right? So I wanted to learn from choreographers that were working in the industry, that were doing the jobs that I wanted to do. And I'm, I went to learn for exec, directly from them. And I took all of their classes and I learned and I eventually you just become like friends and you just, they see you around, you know? And within a year of doing this consistently every day, I was able to get signed to a, a dance agency and become, now start working as a professional dancer. And wow. that was like a huge, that was a huge, you know, accomplishment. But even along the way, like, I was like, okay, I'm here now. I'm just going to take class. Then I was like, well, maybe I should get some headshots because that's what, that's what I need to do. That's what dancers have. Well, maybe I should start building my resume. Okay, I, maybe I'll ask if anyone needs any dancer, almost like an internship. If you need anyone, I'm down to learn. I'm down. And, and like that, it just started building. And before I knew it, here I was in this like, now I'm in a professional audition and now I have an agent and now I'm doing these jobs. So, and it just evolved, but going back, taking it back, it was, it was from that having that plan A and saying, this is, 
I like it. This is what I love to do. I'm not sure how I'm going to get there. I just know I'm going to get there. And let me take it one step at a time. Let me just be around. And being around helped me learn what I needed. It helped me learn the logistics of, of the, the resume and, the, and the, the headshots. But all of that was not even a factor because I just had this conviction of something's going to happen. I'm going to go in the right direction. I just need to go this way. Mm. So great. <laughs> Hi, your your whole your whole journey and just like all the things that you were willing to do is amazing. And and as I listen to you, I'm thinking, whew, I don't know if everybody in life has done that. Like, I don't know. I, there's probably a lot of people that have never probably couldn't even tell you what that thing is. Mm. Like, what's that thing that you know that I would lose sleep over? Mm. You know. And I wonder, so as I, you know, as you're talking, my brain's trying to deconstruct and go, God, I wonder, like for you, even though the path hasn't been easy, it's been clear, like it's been very clear. Um, I wonder, and you know, this is just us messing around because now we're going to kind of, we're getting into the idea and we're like, okay, I mean, if you're standing on a TED stage tomorrow and you're talking about it, what's that nugget? What's that one thing that you can pull out and give people? And I hear so many things. I mean, it could be find that thing could just literally be that only it could be like, be aware when it comes around, it could be like, take the steps needed, do the baby steps until, you know, the little tiny steps bring you to the, you know, to the spot you need to be, or you never really get where you want to go and you just keep going. Or, I mean, there's so many things, but I wonder like, you know, I've been thinking lately about how every human being in the world wants to have some kind of legacy when they're not around anymore. And it happens to all of us, right? Even if we live a hundred years, like what's the thing that we really want to be known for, you know, what, what would you, what would you tell somebody to help them? I seem, I feel like yours is really clear. Um, you know, what would you, what would you tell people to get them into that space of like, it's a legacy thing? You know, what I'm going after, or what I'm doing, or what I'm trying to do will be my legacy, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. And it's funny because I did fight, I did fight it when I was younger. I did fight it a lot. I, you know, even going to Brooklyn Tech High School, it's not a performing arts school. I, even though I've always loved dance, I was very scared of of pursuing it, you know, going to a performing arts school, you had to audition. I was afraid of auditioning. I was, I was, I was, you know, and even at Brooklyn Tech, I was in the media major because that was the more of the, that just spoke to me. It was a little more, cre I could be more creative. And, and then I thought, oh, well, I'll be behind the scenes. I'll, you know, do the marketing and advertising. And I wanted to draw and I fought it. I fought it a lot. And it wasn't until it kept coming around. It kept coming around and it kept showing itself in my life in ways where I'm like, man, really? Again? Or like, you know, like, oh, here's this thing again and this dancing. Oh. And then, you know, when you, when I graduated from college, my parents weren't the happiest that they had just paid for college education and I was going to pursue <laughs> the arts as opposed to as opposed to what I study, you know? Um, and even that, it was like, wow, here, why that? And that goes back to what I was saying earlier. There was times where I wished that it was good enough for me to just sit in a certain space and do certain things. And that's just me, but for someone, it may be, you know, their passion may be uh, being a doctor or being an accountant or being an entrepreneur or being a chef. Like those are just things that just call you and you just, they, for me, it just kept showing itself in my life over and over and over again. And I, and I felt like I missed, I missed it. And I kept, I kept pushing it away. And it, one day it just became like, you know what? I'm going to stop like uh, pushing it away and I'm going to embrace it. And the day that I embraced it, and the day that I embraced this, this journey of mine and going back to legacy, um, I didn't think of it as legacy when I was doing it when I was younger. <laughs> now I do see it that way. But mm -hmm. in the moment, I just knew that it made me feel good. It made me mm -hmm. feel good. Like if nothing else in this world 
art for me makes me feel good and it it has every step of the way even the the, the difficult times there's a fulfillment there and i and i wish we can all feel that you know i think i think that's on the other side of fear on the other side of fear if you push past it and you just go and you just walk take that step on the other side of that fear is a sense of fulfillment a sense of pride and a sense of like pat yourself on the back and it's not like a cockiness or you know there's this inner confidence that you gain when you overcome um things that you didn't think you could do mm. and when you when you take and it just there's a confidence there and there's a relationship that you build with yourself and you have your own back and you can just move and keep moving and as before you know it that was what, what becomes your legacy that is what becomes your legacy it becomes your, your your life and the obstacles that you that you overcame and the achievements that you were able to do even when you're not even thinking their achievements that's your testimony and that's what also inspires others and i think for me now as a, um, as i'm a little older i i'm so honored that i am able to inspire anyone um but that my story can be of inspiration to someone else, especially a younger generation or even someone my age or older. You know, I, my parents spoke to me recently and, and they were really inspired by my journey um, recently because of everything that's gone on with Encanto. And, you know, they look at my journey and they're like, man, you really had the courage to like leave New York, go to LA, and pursue your dreams. And they, you know, a lot of my family didn't quite understand it when I was doing it because it's hard for them to see. It's hard for anyone to see. And now that was that was a lot of validation I didn't know I needed. I didn't well, I didn't necessarily think that I I, I was ever going to get or I I needed, but to hear that felt really nice because mm -hmm. It's so it's such an honor to again be able to inspire my parents and you know their lifestyle and now they're eating healthy and they're doing things for themselves and um, they're pursuing things that they that they're passionate about um, and and they're much older than me so it's it's at any age you can do it it's just mm -hmm. having that strength and um, finding it and how do you find it? If you just pay attention, pay hmm. attention to what is keeps coming in your life. What keeps trying to tell you something? We resist it a lot. What are we afraid of? That's hmm. also a big indicator. What are you afraid of and why? And when you see, and then on the other side of conquering that is that fulfillment and will con if you keep pushing through that, you'll build your own legacy. Wow. All right. All right. First of all, my mind is blown. I got, I, I got so many things. You know, we say this all the time. We stop saying it. We're, we're always like writing things. I'm writing, 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 <laughs> writing, writing, right? Um, and I just got to share with you some of the things that have come out. And I think this word legacy is huge. So, Kathy, thank you for bringing up that word. I think it's so huge. Um, I just want to go back for a second because I wrote down part time your dream. That that was just something when when you talk about getting over that courage or, or or that fear of going for something that you feel you were meant to do, but you sort of, again, I don't want to say stuck, but for the lack of a better term, stuck in stability. And the whole idea that you part, you, that's what I wrote down, part time your dream, right? Just do it piece by piece until it happens, which is something I, I like to, I like to hold on to. Um, but then you said something not today, but you said something in an earlier conversation that we all had that for me keeps coming up. You said, you asked this question, who am I if I can't dance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, I, I, as I was preparing for this conversation today, I looked at that question. I asked myself, who am I? if I can't speak, right? I love speaking. Or who am I 
if I can't coach? And I got to tell you, you know, it's funny we're talking about dancing because what came to my mind is I'm a very, I've always been told I'm a very physical speaker. And it's probably because I love music and I'm always moving around. And I thought I'd probably be a dancer or a mover, right? But it was really because whatever I'm doing, I want to make people feel good about themselves, mm. right? Um, that's why I speak. That's why I coach. That's why I move. And that's what keeps showing up in my life. And, and yeah. you said that so powerfully. And I think that that it can be such a powerful part of the message, paying attention to what shows up in your life yeah. and then asking yourself, why are you afraid of it? Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Why are you afraid yeah. of it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and actually and, even and, like what keeps showing up, right? I mean, that's what she was saying. Like it, it's something that if you pay attention and like keeps showing up, I keep hearing, I keep hearing you say that Kai. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, just like you kept going like, nope, got the dancing's like cool, but nope. And then it shows up. Nope. It shows up again. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, going back to that conversation, um, Mr. Williams, I had when I had knee surgery, that is when I asked myself that question. It was a couple of years ago. So it, was, it was in 2017. And I was at the height of my career I had done a couple national commercials I was on tour I was like yes I am riding this day I'm finally here I have arrived as I'm a professional dancer I'm working with all the top choreographers artists I am here I'm thriving and then pff, splat <laughs> it all came down and it all came crashing down I I was on stage and I tore my ACL and meniscus and I, a complete tear. I was on. I was limping. I couldn't finish the tour. It was holidays. I couldn't get surgery until the following March. And and when I sat there, I remember the first day I sat there in surgery after surgery, and it made it real because I was in this like I was in this thing that was around my leg and this brace, and I couldn't walk. And I knew everyone was telling me, "Oh yeah, six to eight months, you'll be back." I was like, oh my God, six to eight months for a creative. That's, <laughs> that's everything. Oh my gosh, the world is ending. And I sat there in, in time and, and time started passing and I, and I felt this pain in my knee and I felt like I was limping and I, I didn't feel it coming back. I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I couldn't see me going back to the level of dance that I was. So during that time, that six to eight months, I had to ask myself that question because I was like, if I'm not a dancer, then who am I? Because I don't know if I'm gonna go back to dancing. I may be able to walk again. I'm gonna be able to maybe run again. I'll be able to maybe casually dance, but the, the, amount, the rigorous training that is needed to be a professional dancer, because you're an athlete, to go mm -hmm. back to that, and then I was also, I'm, uh, again, I'm not 18 anymore. Am I going to be able to go back? And if I'm not, then who am I? Because again, I've been living my life up until this point as in, in terms of feeling like what I love to do. So if I can't do the one thing that I love to do, what's the point, you know? And, and not to get like sad or anything, but what's the point of living if you get, can't do what you love, right? It's like a very weird question to ask, but it, it needed to be deeper for me. And so very much like you did, Mr. Williams, I, I thought, and I was like, well, what is it about dance that I like? Why do I dance? And a big part of that for me was I love telling stories. I love feeling, I love um, making people feel good. I love people seeing, I love interpreting music. I love music, I love stories. And so that kind of came into my consciousness and I started developing that even more and developing what we talked about as a creative voice and who am I as a now when I started dancing again I approached it differently because I'm like now I understand what more of my purpose is it's not about just dancing it's about telling stories and interpreting stories and being and having a creative voice, which has ironically led me to working on a Disney film about and telling a story through dance. 
you know, as ironic as that may seem, I, it, it, it seems it, it was very intentional because when I, when I was a professional dancer before this moment, I did any job. View, I've, I've done films where I was in a chicken outfit. I've done, <laughs> I've worked in heels. I've done, I've worked on, um, you know, artists that I've done all the jobs. And I did it because that's what I thought I needed to do. And once I hit this wall of, well, what is my purpose in dance? If I'm not a dancer, who am I? I'm a creator. I'm a, I, I'm a storyteller. When I came back to dance, I started aligning myself with jobs and work that was in alignment with that. With, okay, I'm a storyteller. Does this job go in, a, is, it, is it in alignment with who I am? Yes, I will do it. No, no, I won't. You know? Yeah. So that's like another layer of just continuing this discovery. It doesn't end. You know, it's this, this, this self discovery. You only, I've only been able to peel back some of the layers and, and get more into it. Um, and as my journey has evolved, so has those layers. So have those layers. And every time I peel something new, it's like, wow, okay it just opens up a new dimension of what, of what it is that I'm enjoying or, or what my purpose is, you know? Hmm. Ooh. Kai, there's so Actually, much. Fact you're having, having children, which I don't have, yet, and, uh, you know, I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> that's another layer that you guys could probably speak on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just going to say, there's already so much to what you said. My brain is like going in circles of like, oh my gosh, isn't it? Like if Mark and I were coaching you to give a talk on this tomorrow, we're like, oh, Kai, we're going to take your life and your journey. And there's lessons. And there's a couple of really clear things. Like for instance, find the thing that you know that you're supposed to do and do whatever it takes to do that. That's so clear. Like there's no questions. There's no if, and, or buts about that. The other stuff is all kind of like, wow, there's so much, um, you know, how would we try to help you condense that? How would we try to switch it a little bit more? So it's more for the audience. And so that your story just becomes a backdrop and like a big social proof for like the idea that you're saying, you know, um, as opposed to it being like a biography or something that people sometimes can't put themselves into if they can't follow you every step of the way. You know what I mean? Right. Like you lost me at four o'clock in the morning. I was like, well, I don't know if there's anything I can do. Maybe I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And, but, but I do realize that your, I do realize that your journey included that. And I can feel that love that you have for dancing and how much, it means to you and how you wouldn't even care. You would leave work and you would go dance more. And then when you, when part of your work became dancing, you would still go and do that. Like that's super clear, but everybody's not going to have the exact journey that you did, but everybody as a human can, can relate to some of the things or they should, they should be able to uh, take something that you did and find that lesson. I think what keeps coming, I don't know, Mark, I was going to ask you like, so for everybody watching, this would be that moment where we're talking to somebody for the first time and we're like gathering info. We're like, okay, there's a lot. Like, this is such a cool journey. Kai, your journey from like when you knew, knew Mr. Mark Williams. I love that. I'm gonna start calling you Mr. Mark. Mr. Uh -huh. Mark. <laughs> it's my new name for you, Mr. Mark. I'm gonna take off the Williams and just call you Mr. Mark. <laughs> but this great journey of like how he was able to be that, that person in your life. And then there was other people along the way. Um, we're gathering all this information, but then we have to do something with it. And so we're like, okay, well, you know, what idea, like there's so many ideas popping up. So like, how do we, how do we pick the one that we really want to double down on and go with that idea? Um, and what, so that's why I kind of said it, like you're giving a gift to somebody, you're giving a gift to the audience. What's that one thing that you would tell them, but I want you to be able to say it in like a sentence. I want you to be able to say like, find the thing that you're supposed to do and do that. And do that, you know, yeah. or something like, you know what I mean? Like get to that, like hard and fast, like I can hear it in a bite. And if somebody heard you, they could just repeat it to somebody else. Like Kai said this, it was so powerful. She talked about her story, but at the end of the day, she's t saying that, you know, and it could be what I said it is, or it could be something completely different. I mean, that's a, 
when I was listening to you, that's what I was getting. I don't know. What do you think, Mark? That's I, I totally took that thing. Like, what's that thing that you're supposed to do? I still think people don't know the thing that they're supposed to do, even if they're doing it, actually, funny enough. Meaning, like, they might be a good teacher, for instance, maybe, Mark, right? Or something. And they don't really think or they haven't self-described as, like, this is the thing that I'm supposed to be doing for sure. Like, you know. I don't know. What do you think? Um, One, I would agree with you because I would say in all of my years as an educator, it took me almost 20 plus years to realize that the thing that kept coming back for me Mm -hmm. was actually having coaching conversations. And I didn't call that when I was having a coaching conversation with Kai about that dance club. And I I didn't call it a coaching conversation when I had a teacher come to me and try to figure out if this was the right career, but, but that's what I was doing. And that's what kept showing up. And so I agree with you. I think the Kai, I think your autobiographical story is to use the word you said before, absolutely inspiring. One of the things that really jumped out of me because I, I like to, to, to latch on to any word or phrase that keeps coming up. And I I just wonder what the message might be around that creative voice. Kathy, I don't know if you noticed, but Kai says, uses that term so much Mm -hmm. that it makes me wonder what could we do with our creative voice? Yeah. You know, because I agree, you know, um, when when I did a TED Talk, one one of the ones that Kathy always showed me with Simon Sinek, start with why, yeah. right? And he became the, the start with why guy, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, the, that's what it was. He'd tell you, oh, he had a great story. And then at the end, he told me to start with why. So that's the same thing that we're talking about with Kai, right? Kai yeah. told an amazing story and she was inspiring. And at the end, she told us to go for it. Say it. What is it, Kai? <laughs> Find it and do it. I didn't, I didn't do, do it. it. Like, I look at that. That's it. awesome. <laughs> I love how you shortcutted that too. Like, I find it and do it. Find it and do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's funny. I, I do say that a lot um, very often as far as, man, find who you want to be, live authentically, and then just do that. Just do that. Hey, just- I have an idea, Kai. I, it just hit me. It totally just hit me because of how clear you just made it. See what clarity does to people? It really starts making us think. So I listened to that whole thing and I was like, I, everything that you were saying, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many things in here. Like what, what could, you know, like, what would I pull out? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to make her pull it out. And then you made her pull it out. But when you <laughs> said, find it and do it, it just, I, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, for you, it was your lifelong thing, but it doesn't have to be the lifelong thing. Mm-hmm. I want to live in Italy for a year. I want to go back to my roots. I want to do that. I just want to do it for a year. I don't want to live in Italy. Like, like that's kind of one of my big things I want to do. So I, I found it already. Now do it. Find a way to do it. So it, I think I think your idea might be tied into that because and then and then if you know that that's the idea, Kai, it's so easy for you to say. Well, my thing that I found is a lifelong thing. Yours might be a chapter thing. Yours might be a during your kid's childhood years thing. When you have kids, right? It might be like, this is the thing. I, you might t- you might tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna go crazy for a minute, Kai. <laughs> I'm gonna go really crazy for a second. <laughs> Love it, let's go. You might have kids and say, I'm not gonna be 100% into dance like I am because I wanna take care of my kids. Yeah, but that's yeah. a- but that's a chapter thing, right? Doesn't mean you threw dance out or whatever. I, so that's it kind of made me think that it's more, your idea is more fluid, way more fluid. It's like, find it and do it. Whether that thing is like your lifelong thing, or it's a thing that you just never, do you want to kill? Do you want to climb Kilimanjaro? Find it and do it. Like, do you want, do you want to have a kid and you're a little bit older? Find, who cares? Find her, find it and do it. Like, do you want to adopt a kid? Find it and do it. Like, you know, do you want to get a master's degree at 50? Find it and do it. <laughs> right. 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 And it and it's and it's simp- it makes it just that easy. It makes it that easy. Because it is that easy. It is that easy. And you're right. If we kind of sum 
the whole conversation about pushing past fear, even finding your creative voice and just all of these different elements that are specific to my story, that that is a common theme throughout all of it is that there was a, I found something and I did it. And then I found the next thing and then I did that. And then you find the next yeah. thing, and then you, that, you know? Do you see how much more clear you can be even yeah. if you're telling other people too? It's just a clear, like it makes you able yeah. to put more power behind it. You don't have to like describe, you don't have to, they, they don't even have to know your whole full backstory, which is awesome by the way. Like, but they don't, but you don't even like, you could literally tell somebody, Hey, I found my thing and I did it. Like find your thing and do it. You know? Wow. I don't know. Yeah. Mark, what do you think? Well, what, what I was going to say uh, to back up what you said, it's almost like you've got an amazing story, find it and do it will attract more people to hear your story. You know, yeah. rather than tell your yeah. story and lead up to the message, start with start. the simple message. Yeah. And have everybody just fall in and listen. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Ooh. It's yeah. like a verbal start. dance. It's like a start verbal with your dance. why. It's Mark, it's start with your why, right? Like you start, <laughs> like you start with it, right? There it is. It's like find it and do it. Ooh, I love that. I yeah. love this. I knew you're amazing. Hey, you guys. I feel like I feel, I feel like I've accomplished. So oh my much. gosh. It's so uh, I love it. You know, um, Kai, you know, one of the things I really appreciate about what you sat in this space with us and did, which happens a lot. Anybody watching? This is so the behind, this is a normal behind the scenes conversation. Sometimes we will just listen to somebody and we'll listen and we'll listen to the whole story. And they're trying to find it too. You're talking and you're like, okay, if I had to give a TED talk on this tomorrow, oh, let me tell you my journey and la, oh, let me... And then all of a sudden something, you pull something or you keep hearing, like you said, Mark, you keep hearing some of the same words, but it, it just, all these pieces start coming together and then, you, and then there it is. And, and I, and I love how, like, you just kind of shortcutted everything and said, find it and do it. Mm. Oh, man. Um, I, I would, uh, I would leave this conversation and say that was the, I would like literally walk away and go, that is so the idea. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Oh, man. Um, Kathy, I know you're probably going to ask Kai how this has evolved for her. Um, but I just got to know I was going to say that, Mark. Uh, uh, you know, I've done this dance before. I've done this dance before. Um, you asked it. Get the tissues out again. And let me just tell you. As I've said in front of you, Kathy, I'm going to say in front of the world, Kai, I'm so proud of you. I'm so incredibly proud of you. You need to know that when I heard you were backup dancing for Kendrick Lamar on the BT Awards, I had the whole family sitting in front of the TV. There she is. What? There she is. I think it was a Coles commercial. I think it was a Coles commercial. Um, and we were watching it, watching it. And I got to tell you, First of all, my youngest son, Dylan, is probably seen in Contour about 1,500 million times. Um, and the first time we saw it, the credits came on, and we all sat there still. And we waited until we saw your name on the screen. Wow. And I, I see little YouTube videos where it's you oh. dancing and the, the, the characters. And I am just so filled with pride. You talk about whatever I've done to help you. Um, I thank you for coming into my life and giving me the opportunity to help you to, how'd you say it? Find it and do it. You are do it. doing it. You found it, you did it, and you keep doing it. And I, I adore you. I'm mesmerized by you. And I'm so incredibly proud of you. Oh. That's okay. what I got to say, Kathy. <laughs> okay. All right. You gave me chills when you were talking about the family sitting in front of the TV. And, uh, you know, I felt that way, Kai. And I had just met you when I was watching Encanto. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I've never seen you dance. And so in my mind, I was picturing you trying to help get these animated characters and to life. So I'm just, I'm going to ask you a wild question to see if you'll, if you'll go with us for a second. Will sure. you show us a dance move? Oh, of course. Let's see. We're gonna... oh! <laughs> Yes! Oh, I knew, I knew.
wish you would be able to pull something with it. Like if you asked me to dance and just use this, I would be like, I don't not like, how do I do that? And she did like a full move. Oh yeah, my gosh. Oh, yeah, this is my framing. My framing. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was <laughs> awesome. a lost word. Just, just, just because it, it, it's, it's, it's again, like I said in the beginning, it's a full circle moment. Um, you know, it's such a, I feel like it's such a blessing to be able to sit here with you, Mr. Williams, and, and to have this exchange. Cause so many people don't like, you know, and to be able to have this moment and like, thank you for everything that you've done, not just for me, but I'm sure for every person you've encountered, like you really like changed all of our lives. You know what I mean? And, um, I'm sure I speak for all of your students and anyone who's ever encountered you. Like my mom loves you. And she's met you. Just, I was like, Miss, always since, since high school, always my parents are Mr. Williams, you know, and you just have this light that you just impact everyone. And um, thank you for that. And I'm just, again, I'm just, um, it's, I'm overwhelmed, but, and thank you so much, Kathy, for being so just, open and, and welcoming and and truly you guys even in this conversation we even for me it's been so clarifying to help me also understand more my purpose and what my journey is and what I can offer to people as well um as far as you know to find it and do it so I I didn't do I, it thank you thank all you. right well, I just, I want to end too on like, thank you. Uh, I was like totally tearing up. You, we all were, weren't we? Yeah. I saw you guys. <laughs> You're trying to hide it behind the glasses. I saw that. I was like, oh no, mascara is coming. Oh, oh. Kai, if somebody wanted to find out more about you, what's the best place? Like, are you, where do you kind of showcase yourself? Do you have a website? Do you have like Instagram? Like what's the best place to find you and check out? I want to check out your dance moves. Like I want to go find you now. Like that's yes, what I want to find. Yes. So I'm, I have a website. It's a www.kaimartinez.com. So that's my website. I'm also on Instagram heavily. Uh, it's at Kai, K-A-I underscore Martinez underscore underscore. Uh, and that's for all my socials. I'm on Twitter. I'm on TikTok now. All the, the kids are doing it. <laughs> yeah. on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I'm on Facebook, but that's like, you know, family and friends. Uh, but that's most for, that's for people like us, Mark. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So you guys go on there. Um, but mostly, yeah, my website, you'll see, you can see all my work on there and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm so excited to go follow you and check out your website. I want to see your Instagram. I definitely want to see your TikTok. I'm going to go check you out on TikTok too. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I posted a video on there of the side-by-side -side of doing the choreography for Encanto with the animation and it blew up. It, oh, it I took bet. Over. It took over. I had 40 followers and it, it, it's funny. It's just a, a funny anecdote. I had 40 followers when before Encanto came out on TikTok. Now of like a hundred thousand, it's like thirty million. It's thirty million oh. views on the video. It's crazy. So that's just a testament to Encanto and the impact that it's had on the world. So no, that's a testament to Kai and the impact. Yeah, uh. <laughs> I mean that's okay. I mean, that's not nothing against Encanto. Like it's awesome. I love it. I saw it, but it's also the Kai. It's the Kai factor. And yeah. everything that you talked about today and your just find it, find it and do it is what led to that, that you talked about. So awesome. All right. Well, for everybody else, you've just saw Kai, you've heard where we can find her. Uh, please go check it out, especially that TikTok. And now I want to go find, I want to go see the side by side. I want to be part of the millions. Um, but if you want to check out uh, Mark and I, we have a website as well. It's called it's about to go down show.com. You can, uh, if you want to talk to us and have an idea conversation and pull the curtain back and do what we did today, uh, just reach out to us. Or if you know somebody, reach out to us. But Kai, I want to thank you again for being on the show. And thanks for uh, sharing your find it and do it. And until next time, I it's about it. to go down.